The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes, Louie? You look tired. I am a bit. Been working or something? Or something. That is, uh, I've been playing chess. Uh-huh. So wipe the lipstick off your mouth. The lipstick? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Louie. You're welcome. On a chess player, it don't look good. It was a very close game. <laughs> that I can figure out for myself. Hey, look, somebody's moving out of your house, you see? There's a moving van parked in front. Yeah, so there is. I better stop here. They're still lugging furniture out. Oh, I hope it's the people who have the apartment over mine. Why, what's the matter with them? Large feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, that's odd. What? That desk they just put in the van. It looked familiar. All furniture nowadays looks familiar. Oh, they're all finished. I'll pull up. Don't bother, Louie. Uh, how much do I owe you? A buck. Hey, Mr. Temple, what's the matter? I'm beginning to realize why it looked so familiar. Why? Because it was my desk. Now, look, Mr. Temple, you must have made a mistake. You're not moving. I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Mr. Templer. Yes, it was my desk. Not to mention my table, my chairs, my... Hey, Louie, did you get the license number of that truck? No. But it belonged to the North America van lines. How do you know? Said so on the side. Oh, well, I'll look it up in the phone book. Yeah. Room looks awful naked. You know, furniture does a lot to fill up a room. Yeah, I've got it here. Uh, North American, 45 Columbus. Phone number... Well, anyway, we know one thing about where your furniture is gone. We do? Yeah. <laughs> North America. Oh, fine. That's a big help. North American, good evening. Good evening. My name is Simon Templer. I have a complaint. Then you want the manager. I do? You do. His name is George H. Smith. Smith? Oh, very well. Well, let me talk to him. He's not in. Sorry. Well, uh, you might be able to help me. You see, uh, my complaint has to do with my furniture. I, it's just been moved by you people. Didn't we move it far enough? You shouldn't have moved it at all. We're so enthusiastic. I think you'd better check your records. Find out who ordered the van and where the furniture is to be delivered. Very well, sir. Just hold on. Having trouble, Mr. Temple? No, Louie. Just whimsy. From truck drivers? We'll sue them. Who will? Us cabbies in New York. The whimsy belongs to us. And furthermore, I'll... Mr. Templer? Yes? You ordered your furniture moved. I did? Paid for it in advance. Turned the key over to our men and asked for rapid service. Well, I certainly got it. And where did I order the furniture moved to? The Sprague Furniture Galleries. Sprague? But he handles antiques. My furniture's modern. Maybe it's aged rapidly. Good night. Good night, sir. Come on, Louie. We're going to a gallery. We're in a hurry? Yes, you might say we've got to get a move on. <laughs> Louie... I'm, uh, I'm puzzled. I'm ahead of you. My furniture couldn't have been stolen for the money it would bring. It wasn't that valuable. Too great a risk was involved. So somebody did it for fun? Oh, hardly. Why was it stolen tonight, not last week, last month, or last year? Maybe the guys that swiped it were too busy. Also, half a dozen pieces were taken. Among them, a particularly worthless whatnot. What? Whatnot. And who's on third? A uh, whatnot, Louis, is a Victorian monstrosity which shouldn't happen to a tree. The point I'm making, though, is that I've had that whatnot only a few days. Uh-huh. Well, that means they were after the whatnot. So why did they swipe the other stuff? To confuse the issue. To make me think it was just an ordinary burglary. To keep my attention away from the whatnot. Maybe it's worth a lot of money, huh? It's worth exactly what I paid for it, $17. Well, so that don't figure. Where'd you get it, anyway? Oddly enough, Louie, at the Sprague Gallery. <laughs> Don't look open. Come on. Sprague sleeps in the back. He has a small apartment there. There's no truck around, Louis. Must have already unloaded. Yeah. 
Mr. Sprague ought to wash his windows. Yeah, I can't see a thing inside. Must be a bell around, however. Oh, yeah, look, here's one. <laughs> Sounds like an antique bell. Antique or not, it should have waked Mr. Sprague. So maybe somebody should ought to tell him on the count of it ain't wake them. No. Hey. Yeah, the door was open. He may have forgotten to lock it. Hey, light a match, now. Okay. Oh, thanks. Oh. Well, now we got light, but... Hey, there's your furniture. Yeah, so it is. Desk, table, couch, and... And, and, and the whatnot. Yeah. Truckman evidently delivered the stuff and left. But, uh, where's Sprague? Maybe in that back room, huh? Yeah, well, we'll see. Hmm. Oh, the lights are on in here. Kind of a cluttered place for a guy to live in. Yeah, not only cluttered, Louie, it looks as though a hurricane had made more than a passing visit. Yeah, I sh... Mr. Templeton, what, what, what are you staring at? Back here, behind the bed. Huh? Somebody besides the hurricane also visited? Hmm. Knife is still in his chest. He ain't noticing it? He's dead. Oh. Hey, hey, there's a car. Yeah, seems to be in the back. It's gone. Yeah, so I hope is the killer. Come on back in. Yeah, we frightened him off, Louis. Speak for yourself. I don't frighten babies. Either. But he was still here. Why? Evidently, he hadn't finished his job. But what job, Louis? Well, you said the place looked upset. Maybe he was searching it. Yeah, that's true, but searching for what? The furniture was delivered, the truckman left. The odds are that by the time Sprague was already dead. Yeah. Very well, then. What What could the killer have been looking for? The whatnot was here whenever he wanted it for. Louis, I didn't do it. You, you know, that whatnot must have had a history. Sprague probably has records showing where he purchased his furniture. Uh-huh. So the killer hung around trying to cover the back trail of the whatnot, huh? After all, he didn't expect us to notice the truck leaving your house with your furniture. We, we ain't supposed to have been here so quick. Is that good? Only if we find what the killer didn't find. Well, me, I give up. What do we do now? We do just what the killer did before we interrupted him, Louie. Search for Mr. Sprague's ledgers. We go through them, huh? Yeah. And maybe they'll tell us why a man had to die for a whatnot. <laughs> It's not in this one. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Temple, I think I got it. Oh, let me see. Here, here. Ah, Victorian whatnot, yeah. This is Susan Carter, Hill Road, Cresdale, New York. Cresdale? That's only half a dozen miles north of the Bronx. This is strange. He doesn't seem to have paid her anything at all for the whatnot. Maybe she paid him. And we could phone, but... You know, Louis, about the only thing on our side is the element of time. We're moving faster than the killer anticipated, therefore... I know... We go north. You know something, Mr. Templer? The trouble with the country is it's so far from the city. I never thought of that. Well, think about it. It's true. <laughs> I'd rather think about Mrs. Susan Carter. Spray got that whatnot from her about a week ago. Yeah, and I bought it from him three days ago. But uh, will she be able to help us? Why not? Was her what not? Sure, but if she knew anything about it, anything that would make it worth murdering someone for, she'd never have passed it on to Sprague in the first place. We may be chasing a wild goose, Louie. Who needs a wild goose? A wild gander. Slow down, Louie. I think it's that house on the corner. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Ooh, it's a large house. Yeah. It looks... It looks like there ought to be bats flying around it. Oh, it's not so bad. It's not a house most people would prefer to live in. Make a wonderful place to die in. Ooh, what am I saying? I have to frighten myself yet. Mm. Lights on somewhere inside. They must keep late hours. Let's go. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Some fun they have in these country houses. Yeah, I think it's time we rang. You know, I'm wondering what she didn't. Hey, look, the light just went out inside. I got a feeling nobody is going to open that door. All right, all right, all right. So I was wrong. 
But who opened it? It doesn't matter. We can get in. Okay. Except I would be happier if somebody at least had opened it. It's like a house of the dead. Stop making up phrases like that. It came from someplace down this hallway. You're running in the wrong direction. We're running towards hey, Look, it must be this door. It's the only one along the hallway. Does it open? Yeah, it opens. Uh, you. Oh, he- hello. I'm I'm Simon Templer. This is Louie. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, we heard you scream. Yeah. It was because I saw a mouth. But it must have been a large mouth. It was a large scream, Mrs. Carter. I'm not Mrs. Carter. But uh... Claire Wayne, Mrs. Carter's niece. Oh, I apologize. How'd you get in? Well, the front door opened by itself. A very mysterious effect. You're making things up. Not really. Uh, could we see Mrs. Carter? Could you? Oh no. Miss Wayne. Come on, Louie. Yeah, well, I'm right behind you. Claire! Where the devil? Claire! Oh, I, I'm sorry. Neither of us is Claire. Are you Mr. Carter? Carter? Me? No, no. I'm Harold Thompson, Susan's nephew. Oh, well, I'm Simon Templer. Louie. Templer, huh? Are you the saint? Yes, I am. Well, this is quite an honor for us. Thank you. Actually, I wanted to speak to your aunt. You did? <laughs> I said something amusing? <laughs> You've no idea how amusing. I'll laugh about it all night. <laughs> hey. Oh, he's gone, too. Yeah, very restless type characters. Well, anyway, we're getting acquainted fast. Except with Mrs. Carter. Large house. We'll have to look through all the rooms in it. You'll have to look even farther than mm-hmm. that, sir. I didn't hear you come into the room. You walk softly. It's a habit of mine. The ill and the dying resent a heavy footstep. It uh, frightens them. Really? Delusion of reference. I suspect they associate it with death coming for them. You're a doctor. Yes, I'm Dr. Thor. Uh, my name's Templer, and this is Louis. Good evening, gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, you're Mrs. Carter's physician. Yes. She's ill, then? No. She's not at all ill. Well, then I'd like to speak to her at once. About, uh... uh about a whatnot that she gave to an antique dealer named Sprague. Seems a trivial reason to brought you out here at this hour. The whatnot in itself is perhaps a trivial thing, Doctor, but murder isn't. Murder? Mr. Sprague. Oh. Uh, at what time was he... Probably uh... around 8 this evening. Hmm, that's interesting. At 8, I was out in my car on my way here, but I took a long way around. Might have included the stop in the city. At 8, Harold Thompson had not as yet reached this house. Of course, where he was until then, I cannot say. At 8, Claire Wayne was at the movie, she told me earlier. Well, perhaps she was. Well, very interesting hour. Yes, and uh, where was Mrs. Carter at 8 o'clock? Well, she was where she is now, with the nurse in attendance. I thought you said she wasn't ill. She isn't. She was. Oh, I see. She's dead, then. She's dead. Interesting. Three people might have known what the mystery of the whatnot was, and of them, two are dead. The third is a murderer. Susan Carter was an old woman with a weak heart. Meaning her death was natural? Yes. I don't sneer at coincidence, Dr. Thorne, but under the circumstances, I'd like to be sure it was coincidence. Well, of course, I can't quarrel with you about that. I've had a thought or two about Susan's death myself. And? She wasn't stabbed to death. Her heart did fail. Mr. Templer, uh, I'm not a young man anymore. I- I'm tired. I- I'm, all- I'm all confused and... Before going any further into this thing, I'd like to rest. Uh, would it be asking too much of you to spend the night here, hmm? Mr. Templer? I, I think it's very hospitable of you. plenty of room. This is a large house. Suppose we all go to bed. In the morning, perhaps the shadows will all have fled. Well, I you think you'll be comfortable in this room. I, I know the house quite well, you see. I, I played in it as a child. There was a time when I thought that perhaps Susan and I would live in it together, but uh, I uh, married someone else. Uh, good night. Good night, Doctor. Yeah, good night. He's kind of broken up about Mrs. Carter's death, huh? Yes, he is. Could be an act. Uh, it seemed genuine. You know, Louis. Nobody in this house has an alibi for Sprague's death. Yeah, Mr. Temple, let's go to sleep, huh? In the morning, I'll feel strong enough to be surprised. But right now... All right, we'll go to sleep. 
What could happen anyway? Smelled smoke. Uh, well, 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 the house is on fire. Hey, come on, Louis. Yeah, I'm right with you. The smoke is terrible. Oh, hey, look, we've got to warn the others. Yeah. I'll get the ones the other side of the hall. The smoke is getting awful thick. Miss Wayne. Miss Wayne. Oh, I was asleep. Uh, go downstairs and out of the house, quick. Oh. The house happens to be on fire. Oh, all right. Louie. Temple. Oh, there you are. I got both Dr. Thorne and Harold Thompson. They're on their way down. We better get downstairs, too. No, not yet. But we got every living thing out of the house. Yeah, but you forgot the dead. Dr. Thorne, the other men... What happened to them? Be still, my dear. We're safely out. They must have ducked down the back way. Or... No. Here they come now. They're carrying something. Not something, Harold. They're carrying a corpse. No. Well, we're far enough away from the house, Louie. We can put her down now. Okay, Mr. Temple. But it's crazy. She's dead, don't you understand? She's dead. Yes, I know, Miss Wayne, but I understand something else, too. That fire wasn't for our benefit. It was for her. Louis, the lower half of the house hasn't been touched yet. I'm going back in to phone the fire department. Maybe I better go with you. No. You're to stay here to make sure that no one harms her. Miss Wayne? No, Louis. Mrs. Carter. <laughs> Thank you, Carlison. You and the boys did a fine job. Glad we were able to save the lower part of the house. Okay, boys, back to the Beanoggle game. <laughs> you know that Cresdale Fire Department ain't bad? No. We may as well all go inside. I'll take Mrs. Carter. I, um, I can't say I exactly follow your mental processes, Temple. Oh, is that important? I don't know. Why did you have to disturb her? Mrs. Carter, she's far beyond any disturbances I could create. What Claire meant was, why lug her around the way you are? There's a very simple answer. You see, she's a very important clue. To what? Murder. Shut the door off, Mr. Thompson. Oh, thanks, Larry. Well, this room will do as well as any. The couch for Mrs. Carter. Mr. Temple, I, I think I shall insist upon an explanation. We're, we're all here. But we're not all here. What? Oh, Harold. Yes. He was with us when we arrived at the front door, but then... Yeah, he must have decided that other climbs would be healthier climbs for him at any rate. You're not saying Harold killed... I'm saying nothing about that at the moment. Dr. Thorne, does Claire resemble Mrs. Carter as Mrs. Carter was when she was a girl, of course? You're a cute Templar. The answer, of course, is yes. It's an amazing resemblance. Mm. Yes, it would have to be. I'm not sure I... Why amazing? We were very closely related. That's not the point. Then what is? Someone burgled my apartment, stole a number of pieces of furniture. Among those pieces was a worthless whatnot. Since it was taken along with the others, the others were merely camouflaged. The burglar was primarily after the whatnot. Well, what connection is there between furniture and... Uh... And, uh, death? <laughs> that whatnot, Dr. Thorne, until a week ago, belonged to Mrs. Carter. Oh? A Mrs. Carter who may have died naturally, or who may have been killed. I told you her heart failed. Almost anything might have brought it on. Yes, Doctor, almost anything. Perhaps a tiny dose of poison, so tiny that it wouldn't of itself be fatal, so tiny that it would produce no symptoms of poisoning, but it would strain an already weak heart, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it's uh, possible. More than possible. It has to be so. Otherwise, why the fire in the upper part of the house? A fire, therefore, that couldn't have been accidental. No cooking or heating is done up there. Well, maybe somebody was after... The uh, living, Louis? No. No doors were locked. None of us were drugged. The house itself is easier to escape from. Fire had only one purpose, 
to destroy the body of Mrs. Carter, to destroy the possibility of an autopsy on that body. I'm tired. Oh, tired. I better go home. No, not quite yet, Doctor. Mrs. Carter was wealthy? Well, no one knows, you see. She never kept money in the bank. There's always, of course, been a theory that she hid all the money somewhere in this house. She's mean and nasty. I don't mind telling you that Harold and I searched all through the house looking for that money. Did you find it? No. Do you need money, Doctor? I, uh... His wife spends more than he earns. Of course he does. I do. Harold does. There wasn't any money. Was Mrs. Carter a sentimental woman, Doctor? No. No, she was a bitter woman. She hated. Well. Yes, and she was very ill. She knew she was surrounded by... Yes, vultures waiting for her to die so they could pick up her old bones or whatever money clung to them. <laughs> Your way of putting it. <laughs> well, it's an accurate way. And now that you know, Mr. Templer, may I go home? Yes. Yes, after you answer one question. That question being... Somewhat earlier this evening, when I asked you about the possibility of Mrs. Carter's death having been murdered, you denied that possibility. I still... Or perhaps I do no longer deny it. However, That's I... That's not uh... my question. At that time, you said she wasn't stabbed to death, meaning that Mr. Sprague, of whose murder I had just informed you, was stabbed to death. But, Dr. Thorne, there are many ways in which a man can be killed... Your question, then, is how did I know that Sprague had been killed with a knife? Yes, Doctor. I don't think I shall answer that question. I'm sorry. Louis, will you get on the phone? The cops? The police. Okay. Sit down, Dr. Thorne. You... You won't need me anymore. Mm. No, Miss Wayne. Then I'll go. Any other room. This one's ugly. Oh! What's the matter? Caught my stockings on the edge of the chair. Oh, that's too bad. They're, uh, they're pretty stockings. They should be. They're nylon. They cost a fortune. Good night, Mr. Temple. Good night. Oh, well, I phoned the cops. They're on their way, Mr. Temple. No, good, Louis. Hey, uh, Dr. Thorne, you don't look so good. No. You know, if murderers would clap master padlocks on their lips, a lot of them would be better off. They wouldn't give themselves away. And detectives would have a harder time. No, Louis. No matter how securely a murderer's lips may be locked, I uh, coin a phrase, murder will out. Yeah, but if Dr. Thorne hadn't made that slip about the stabbing, you'd never been able to pin the killing on him. Mm -hmm, that's true. But then you see, Dr. Thorne didn't kill anyone. are going to be here pretty soon. And for the last ten minutes, nobody has said nothing. No, but Dr. Thorne has undoubtedly been thinking. If he didn't kill anybody, what has he got to think about? About who did? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Templer. Yes, Doctor? You're quite sure. <sighs> yes, I am. There's no hope of... None. Well, it was a resemblance, of course. A resemblance to a woman that I'd, uh... You permit an old and tired man and... Old and tired cliché. Of mm. course. A woman that I had loved and lost. I don't get it. Harold did it, didn't he? Not unless he wears nylon stockings. Hmm. Nylon socks, maybe, but stockings? I'm sitting right all by myself. Why are you staring at me like that, Doctor? It's late. But... Dr. Thorne means he, he followed you to Sprague's earlier tonight. He saw Sprague's body with the knife in it. Well, of course he did. He had to, to kill him. Didn't he? he also saw you leave when Louie and I got to the gallery. Leave before you could find the record of where the whatnot originally came from. Find it and destroy it, lest it lead to this house and you. No. Oh, yes. Right, Dr. Thorne? You see, Miss Wayne, even now the doctor won't give you away because you look so much like the woman he loved. No, he didn't. And he killed my aunt. No, a doctor wouldn't have used poison to kill his own patient. Too obvious. A breath of suspicion and he wouldn't have a chance. Harold... No, no. His disappearance half an hour ago proved his innocence. To who? Louis, where do you think he went? Me? He didn't stop to tell. He went to Sprague's to get at that whatnot. 
Because he realized that his aunt had hidden her money in it. Hadn't she, Miss Wayne? I don't know. You do. The police will find it, wherever you've hidden it. The police aren't going to... Come on, open up with that! Yeah, the police are, and that will be proof enough. It's a pity. And all because of a whatnot. Such an ugly thing. It's all right. So the cops found the doll in the girl's suitcase downstairs in the hall closet. So she killed her aunt and sprayed. But something must have tipped you off before you could be so sure. Nylon stockings, Louis. Oh, we're back to those again. All right, what about nylon stockings? Louis, whoever poisoned Mrs. Carter was the one who set fire to the house in order to destroy the corpse and prevent an autopsy. Yeah? Well, when I warned Claire Wayne about the fire, she said she'd been asleep. Yeah? Later on, after I'd confronted Dr. Thorne with what seemed to be his guilt, she left the room. On the way out, she caught her stockings on a chair. So? Louis, how much do you know about women? Everything. Do women go to sleep with nylon stockings on? Oh, the answer is no. Therefore, Claire Wayne had not been asleep. She'd lied about that with no reason. Unless she had started the fire. Yeah. So she started the fire, so she poisoned the ranch, stabbed Sprague. Yeah, okay. Only one thing more. What, Louis? Remember when we got to the Carter house and rang the bell and then the door opened all by itself? Yes, I remember. Never mind remembering. Explain. Oh, probably only a warped door, Louis. The house was very old. Hey, I just thought of something. Yeah, what, Mr. Templer? When I get home, I'll be bedless. Oh, gee, that's right. You ain't got no furniture. Want I should drop you off at a hotel? No, thank you, Louis. Maybe I can find a, a good chess game. been listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Peggy Weber as Claire and Victor Rodman as Dr. Thorne. David Ellis was Harold, Gilbert Fry the dispatcher. Larry Dobkin plays Louis. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This Adventure of the Saint was written by Lou Vitties. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is produced by James L. Safier and directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. For something new and exciting in your big Sunday lineup on NBC, listen to the Phil Regan Camp Show coming up next. There'll be prizes for talented GIs and the very best Sunday listening for you with the Phil Regan Camp Show next on NBC.